Hey guys, um, my name is Dwayne. Um, this is going to be a video about um, Phoenix RC, the simulator. And um, this is for all those people who wanted me to make some videos or tutorials or something about flying and the use of Phoenix RC and, you know, things that I think about the sport in general and they just wanted to know because I mean yeah, that's pretty much what it's going to be about I guess <clears throat> and I'm going to show you some tricks or how I do tricks how I learned to do some of these tricks um, some of the things that I think are the key focus areas for your learning curve when you're learning to you know fly RC helis and it's specifically helis I won't be doing any plane stuff um, I don't fly planes so you know I'll sort of stay away from that but this video or it might even turn into a group of videos I'm not sure yet um, it's I'm gonna break it down into the different um, things like you know the the simulator itself um, the radio that I happen to be using um, a helicopter choice um, and the relevance of those things, I think, for the learning curve and whatnot. Because I noticed that there's a lot of you, and they have been asking me, what's the best heli to use? What's the best radio to start out with? Um, Etc. All these kinds of things, you know. And what are the, you know, main f tricks that I should focus on, or what's, you know, where do you start? So I'll try and um, explain those things, um, or what's worked for me. But I mean. The first thing I think you should probably realize is that there's a, so many different paths to get to the same place. Not everyone learns, learns things the same way. And so, you know, what works for me may not work for you. Or, and what works for you may not work for me or anybody else who's trying to, you know, learn a particular thing. And that, you know, that crosses the board. It doesn't matter what it is that you're learning. Everyone learns to drive a car a different way at a different rate until it clicks in. Um... So, you know, Marcy Helly's is no different. And so, <clears throat> um, the information that I give you, I'm going to try and make it as, as specific as possible to the particular thing and explain along the way why I, you know, why I'm getting you to do specific things the way that I'm getting you to do them. And, that, and hopefully, you know, that will help you pick up on these tricks. And I'm going to explain the, the areas that I think are important to focus on. And um, within a particular trick or within a particular maneuver or you know, that kind of thing. But um, we'll get going anyway. All right. Let's go. All right. This is the radio that I use to fly on the simulator with. This is a, just a Spectrum DX7. It's really old. Um, <laughs> I don't trust it to fly with my actual helis anymore. I've got a newer DX7S. And that that I use to fly my real helis. Um, but this is perfectly fine for the simulator. And, um, you know, it's actually it's a, it's a really good radio. This is a radio that I've sort of got clock of the most hours on. And therefore, you know, whether it being in the real or on the simulator, it doesn't matter. You know, this is the one that's been the one that I sort of learned everything on. Um, the... There's lots of schools of thought as to what you should do with your radio in terms of stick tension and setup and where you should assign your things. You, know, you can read a thousand different blogs and forums and whatnot and what people think are the best different ways to do these things. It's up to you. Honestly, I'm not going to tell you which way you should and shouldn't have your switches assigned. <laughs> I mean, it's personal preference, man. Um, this is a Mode 2 radio. I'm a Mode 2 pilot like a lot of other people. Um, I think Mode 2s are the majority. Um, so that means my collective is the left hand stick and my entire cyclic is on the right. So, you know, um, aileron, elevator, rudder, pitch and collective. Um, that's basically it. That's the radio that I use. Um, I've got my throttle hold set up on my top right. And my idle modes set up on the top left. 
and that's exactly how I have them set up on my real helis as well. Um, I've and I've got my stick tension turned down a little bit. They're not there's not so much resistance. They're a little bit you know slacker than what they would be out of the box, and that goes for this as well. You can see the stick actually just drops. It doesn't it won't sit there very easily. Just kind of sits. I find that works the best for me anyway, personally. Um, but that, again, that's like personal preference, whatever you want to do, however you want to set it up, whatever works for you. Try out different things. Um, you know, don't take my word as law or anyone else's. Make the decision for yourself by trying it out. See which works for you the best. All right. All right. Phoenix RC. Now, the first thing I want to take a look at is the um, simulator itself. Let me just hit throttle hold for a minute. I want to take a look at the simulator itself for a couple of minutes and the particular things that I have um, on screen. I have the controller up. Now, this is just going to be sort of for you guys. Um, so that you can have reference as to the, the sticks and what they're doing <clears throat> at any given time. But as I'm doing tricks and that, that I'm actually trying to explain to you, I'll explain it in different terms than what there is on the you know, stick movements and whatnot. Because I don't want you to get hung up on stick movements and that as a, you know, oh, I'm, he's throwing it into the corner and, you know, the top right-hand corner of the stick. You know, I don't want you thinking about it like that. But rather... I want you to think about it and the what the machine's doing. So if I was to say a 180 degree right hand aileron roll, in your mind you can already picture what the machine's going to be doing. And so the stick movements are relevant because you know what stick movement it takes to make it do that. And I think those are better terms to think about it in as opposed to oh, hold the stick over to the right about this thing for about this long and it'll result in this, you know, because that's, you know, a little bit too confusing, I think, personally. <clears throat> but the sticks will be on there for reference anyway. Also, I have the flight info up, and it's, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is it shows the collective down the bottom here. At the moment, you'll see it flickering at minus 12, or negative 12, and positive 12 degrees of pitch. Um, also, I can see um, my RPM, the head speed. Let's just crank that up. So, if, say, I'm in an auto-rotation, I know how much head speed, just at a quick glance, I've got left to work with. Also, um, I can see the speed, how fast it's going how high it is, and the distance. Now this is an important one for me, because I always try and fly a certain distance away from myself as such, or not too close to myself is probably a better way to put it. And when I'm reviewing, I can have a look and see how close I was to myself at any given point. And somebody goes, oh man, you were really close to yourself right there. It's like, well, no, actually I was still about five meters away. So that's just a quick look at what I've got on the screen. Now, if we have a look at the simulator itself, um, if I mean, I think you're all pretty familiar with um, Phoenix and all the different features and whatnot that it has. Um, how to set up your radio, um, how to calibrate it, how to change the different um, radio models, things like that. <sighs> this kind of information. <laughs> The physics. 
people a lot of times i've read this a lot and i've seen it in a bunch of other videos people telling you to speed up or slow down the simulation speed it's worth giving it a go it's definitely worth having a try but to be honest i wouldn't use that as your primary way of learning things because you, i mean that's not how you're going to fly you can't speed up or slow down time when you're out there standing there at the field with a real heli it's just not going to work that way um if you're having difficulty trying to pick up a particular skill or or, or figure out how something is happening then yeah sure slow down the simulation so you can figure it out and figure out your corrections for things but re you have to try really hard not to get into a habit of doing it because too many people i've seen and that's what their that's their primary go-to thing is they'll just slow down the simulation speed and it just becomes ridiculous they can't fly properly or those people who go oh no speed it up i can fly at you know 150 percent you know 125 percent i thought why <laughs> why you're never going to fly a machine like that ever <laughs> so why do it it's pointless <clears throat> so yeah it's up to you like have a go at it see what it's like see if it works for you if it, if it does great if it doesn't you know you'll be the same as me pretty much I think. <laughs> and just ignore it just leave it at 100 percent, and that's it also the um here's one the view here's what i do and this is why it looks the way that it does i turn off the auto zoom because when you're standing out of the field i'm sorry your eyes don't zoom into the machine they just don't the machine will fly away from you just like it is right there um so yeah turn off don't the other thing is it helps you give you some perspective because if we turn the auto zoom on and you go up here all of a sudden i don't know how far away that machine is from me anymore whether it's going up whether it's getting closer getting further away what orientation is it in now i don't know because i have no re point of reference there is no ground as a point of reference so let's turn the auto zoom back off again now i've got a point of reference i can see where it's moving in the air and i know where i am on the field whereas with the auto zoom on you lose all that perspective and it's pretty much a game of perspective it honestly is this flying rc helis it's your perspective on the machine all of the time What else is there? Um, toolbars and whatnot. I don't need buddies. Don't need notifications. I don't need scenarios. I don't really need favorites. I don't bother to run any of that. On the displays. Um, what do I want to see on there? You can't change the amount of stuff. The resolution frames per second flying planes flaps um just flight recorder obviously all of you guys would have played with that the training tools they're actually all right the um hover training is not too bad for for a very very new beginner um auto rotation training that's not too bad competitions and of course multiplayer Ooh, multiplayer I swear I've seen all of you guys. Display. As you can see, this is just being recorded on a little wee laptop. So, I mean, there's not... Um, maximum resolution for this thing is 1366 by 768. Um, I've got everything on medium, just so that I can actually record, um, you know, the videos and whatnot. So that's just a 
really quick look around the simulator itself, you know, what's what, where it is, um, for some of the things, but uh, most, most of you guys know everything that's there, so it's not really a big deal whatsoever. All right, where do we start? Well, um, I'm just flying around a bit so I can kind of warm up, blow out the cobwebs, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> I'm just trying to remember some of the stuff you guys actually wanted to learn so that I can uh, try it out. It's something else that I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to edit out my crashes. Um, they can stay there. You can see I crash like everybody else. I'm not. <laughs> um, nothing special. I'm going to try and mix in some videos as well, actually, of some of the pros. And that's to help break down and explain tricks and that sort of carry on. But also to take a look at um, style aspects and whatnot, what makes something cool to me, you know, like things that I like and, in, in, you know, style and variation and, um, of the way different pilots fly. Like it seems, especially lately, I don't know what it is, um, I'm not a big fan of the way that a lot of people fly now, especially with electrics and whatnot being the, the, the dominant uh, you know, type of machine that ridiculous amounts of power kind of thing. It's like everyone's pushed to just do bloody TikToks for three and a half minutes and then put it down. That's it. But oh, look, I can fit a million TikToks in half a second. Oh, my machine's so great. Well, I don't want to see that, so I'm not going to watch your videos. I'm sorry. Um, that seems to be the trend at the moment. Um, I prefer older school tricks, things that flow and, and whatnot, some technicality to them. And I'm not talking about technicality for technicality's sake, like, I couldn't give a shit about true chaos, I really couldn't. I'm just going to do per flip, okay? Don't care about true chaos. Somebody's going to stand there and look at it most of the time, most people can't even tell what's what. So, yes, I like technical tricks, but not technicality for its own sake. Um, trick names. I think the only person I've really seen naming tricks, like naming, naming tricks, is um, Jamie Robertson. You know, was it Tomahawk and Mirrors and all that? He's the only one I've seen naming tricks, but it's a cool thing to do. I like it actually. It's more modern. It's more new school cool. Like um, a lot of the terminology I use actually is stolen from skateboarding and BMX and snow snowboarding and skiing and whatnot. Um, like the term switch. Like I'm not gonna say reverse pro pro flip. I'm not gonna do it. Oh, look at me, I'm doing a reverse pro flip. No, I'm going to call it a switch pro flip. <clears throat> Alrighty, that's enough warming up. Throw down a little order. Alright. We'll get into it. 